Clear skies greeted Endeavour at the Kennedy Space Center Friday as the crew of the first space shuttle mission of the new century awakened to prepare for launch. When they gathered in crew quarters prior to suiting up, they all looked eager to begin mapping the Earth on the shuttle radar topography mission. Leading the multinational crew is 43-year-old Kevin Kriegel, commanding his second shuttle mission and making his fourth space flight. Joining Kriegel on the red shift is mission specialist Gerhard Tila of the European Space Agency, the only spaceflight rookie on the crew, and Janet Cavandi making her second shuttle flight. Cavandi served as the flight engineer during today's launch. Navy Captain Dom Gorey is making his second space flight as a shuttle pilot. Joining Gorey on the blue shift is Endeavour's payload commander, Janice Voss. STS-99 is her fifth space flight. Also on the blue shift is Dr. Mamoru Mori of NASDA, the Japanese space agency, making his second shuttle flight. Friday morning, the six astronauts were cheered by friends and co-workers as they left the Kennedy Space Center crew quarters for the ride to launch pad 39A. There, Kriegel led his crewmates as they took their seats on board the orbiter. At T minus nine minutes, the clock entered the final planned hold of the countdown, which allowed mission managers time to ensure that all systems were set to go. Launch director David King gave Kriegel the word that everyone was ready. Yeah, Kevin, looks like a great day to go fly, a uh, great opportunity to send you on your uh, Earth mapping mission, and uh, if you guys are ready, uh, we're going to pick up the count here momentarily. So all crews are uh, ready. We appreciate all your hard work, and we're ready to map the world. Minutes later, the clock resumed its countdown to launch time, while the flight crew ran over final checklists. Then they closed their helmet visors and waited for the shuttle's main engines and solid rocket boosters to send them on their way. Seven. We have a go for main engine start. Four. Three. Two. One. Booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Endeavour on a 21st century mission, placing Earth back on the map. Roll for Houston. Roger roll, Endeavour. As Kriegel settled Endeavour into orbit some 140 miles above the Earth, Tila and Cavandi began activation of the radar instruments and prepared for the deployment of the 200-foot-long boom, which houses two of the radar systems. After all the checkouts were complete, Tila and Cavandi began the 17-minute process of deploying the mast. After all sections of the mast were fully extended, the outboard radar antenna was flipped into proper orientation for mapping. In Houston, uh, we showed motion stop at six hours, zero minutes, and 30 seconds. Copy that, six zero thirty. A long train out there. With the successful deploy of the mast, Endeavour was poised to begin acquiring data for the most detailed and comprehensive map of the Earth ever undertaken. Good morning. This is Shuttle Launch Control at T-minus three hours, nine minutes, and counting. We now begin our live coverage of the second launch attempt for Space Shuttle Endeavour on mission STS-99 here at NASA's John F. Kennedy Space Center in firing room number three. Today, Space Shuttle Endeavour will embark on the 97th flight in shuttle program history. On the planned 11-day shuttle radar topography mission, also known as SRTM, a unique radar system will collect the most accurate measurements of the Earth's elevation ever attained using a 200-foot-long mast that, once deployed, will be the largest rigid structure ever flown in space. Images from SRTM will be valuable to military planners, aircraft designers, firefighters, weather forecasters, and even backcountry hikers. And here we are, all the crew members gathered in the dining room here at the crew quarters. To our far left, we have mission specialist number four, Mamoru Mori, represents the Japanese Space Agency, flown on one previous flight in 1992, which was STS-47. To his right, Janice Voss, 
uh, payload commander and mission specialist number three. This is her fifth shuttle flight. Pilot Dom Gorey making his second flight as pilot. Commander Kevin Kriegel served as pilot on two previous shuttle missions and commander on a third. Janet Cavandi, mission specialist number two. And Gerhard Tila of the European Space Agency. We see their traditional cake there in the foreground with the crew insignia. Astronauts having completed their meal, getting ready to make preparation to leave the ONC and head to the launch pad. We are standing by for live coverage of the STS-99 crew suit up and here they are. Commander Kevin Kriegel to the right, having donned his launch and entry suit. This is his fourth shuttle mission. Been an astronaut since 1992 on this flight as commander uh, responsible for mission safety and mission success. This will be Kevin Kriegel's second flight as a commander. He served as a pilot on STS-70 and STS-78 and was a commander on STS-87 back in 1997. Pilot Dom Gorey. He will assist Kriegel at the flight controls for launch and landing activities. He piloted Orbiter Discovery on mission STS-91, the last Mir docking mission. Now looks forward to his second flight. Gorey will also operate a high definition TV camera and Earth cam payload on this mission. Gorey grew up in Florida and his parents still reside here. Mamoru Mori, mission specialist number four of Japan, the Japanese space agency NASDA. He will join Janice Voss with the SRTM responsibilities on this, his second shuttle flight. This is Gerhard Tila of the European Space Agency. Mission specialist number one, responsible for SRTM operations on the red team shift. He will also be involved with the deploy of the SRTM's 200-foot boom. This is his first shuttle flight. He did serve as an alternate payload specialist uh, back on STS-955, uh, but uh, did not fly on that mission began his training at the German Aerospace Research Establishment back in 1988. Janet Cavandi, mission specialist number two. She will support Kriegel and Gorey uh, as a flight engineer during the launch and landing phases of the flight. She's also responsible for SRTM on the redshift. Should a contingency spacewalk be required, Cavandi and Tila would perform those duties together Kavandi Hales from Missouri. And Janice Voss, mission specialist number three, serving as a payload commander on the flight, responsible for SRTM operations overall on this mission. She's been an astronaut since 1990 and has four shuttle missions to her credit, STS-57, 63, 83, and most recently STS-94. She considers Rockford, Illinois to be her home. The STS-99 crew leaving the crew quarters. They'll know how to head down the hall and take the elevator down to, sh to street level where KSC employees and members of the media have gathered to greet them and wish them well on their journey. And here come the STS-99 astronauts. The STS-99 flight crew has arrived at launch pad 39A and will shortly begin their ascent in the elevators of the fixed service structure. Here they are arriving on the fixed service structure. Soon they'll enter the white room and begin ingress into the crew compartment to occupy their assigned positions. That. Here we see Commander Kriegel now moving up into his seat on the left front seat of 
Shuttle Endeavor. Okay, here's a good view of uh, uh, the pilot now, Dom Gorey, getting himself strapped in. Carlos is uh, reaching around, getting that uh, side strap there. As I said before, once we get the commander and the pilot in, then we'll do some re uh, switch reconfigurations. Uh, John Harrington will get the Ohms drivers on and the uh, reaction control system switches on. And then the uh, commander will also uh, get one of the computers uh, configured for launch. You can see uh, Janice Voss here, JV, uh, getting into her seat number five. Uh, it's important that they get them exactly straight on the seat, Joel, so that uh, as they're laying on their back for a couple hours, that the, uh, the oxygen bottles underneath their back uh, doesn't uh, drive into their spine. So they're getting them exactly positioned, and uh, that's very important. There's Gerhardt uh, with his class patch, uh, unofficial class patch, uh, the sardines. They were selected in 1996, uh, group 16. Uh, 44 of those uh, crew members selected in that class. Uh, and uh, Gerhardt's one of the first of his class to, uh, early crew members to fly. It's like we saw Memorial Moore earlier also holding a, an unofficial insignia himself. MS-1 OTC, got you loud and clear. Guten Tag, Gerhard B. Gates. Guten Tag, Jeff. Ausgezeichnet. Wunderbar. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus one hour, 33 minutes and counting. You can see as we pan across the Kennedy Space Center wetlands, uh, the haze that we were talking about earlier that has been just a point of discussion among uh, weather forecasters. And ISL OTC 212. This is ISL. And CDR, launch track on 212. CDR, great day. Yeah, Kevin, looks like a great day to go fly, uh, a great opportunity to send you on your uh, Earth mapping mission. and. Uh, if you guys are ready, uh, we're going to pick up the count here momentarily. So all crews are uh, ready. We appreciate all your hard work, and we're ready to map the world. Do that. And NTD launch instructor, you have a go to pick up the count. And launch instructor, NTD, I copy. Attention all stations, the countdown clock will pick up momentarily. And GLS, NTD, pick up the count on your mark. GLS, companies, clock will resume on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. T minus nine minutes and counting. GLS saw the sequence has been initiated. GLS must go for OAA recheck. And he's the flight NTD on 212. NTD. We see the orbiter access arm beginning to retract away from Space Shuttle Endeavour's crew hatch. Negative. Copy that. Thank you. The RPS OTC start APU strip chart recorders. Strip chart recorders are running. Now we see the retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood now underway. OTC PSC would clear the caution warning. There were no unexpected errors. Copy that. Endeavor OTC, close and launch your visors and issued O2 flow. Good luck on your mission that builds on the past explorations of this millennium as we increase our knowledge of planet Earth in the next. And Deva copies. Thanks. The six-member crew is about to embark on the 97th shuttle flight in shuttle history since the first flight in 1981. 20. T-minus 20 seconds. 15. 15. 12. 11. 10. 9. 8. 7. We have a go for main engine start. Four, three, two, one. 
booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Endeavour on a 21st century mission placing Earth back on the map. Roll for Roger roll Endeavour. Houston's now controlling. They were rolling on a course northeast away from the Kennedy Space Center toward an orbit that will take it above 95% of the world's population during its mission. Endeavour speed already 300 miles per hour. Altitude one mile. Three engines on Endeavour now throttling back to two thirds throttle to uh, as the spacecraft prepares to go through the area of maximum aerodynamic pressure and uh, go supersonic. since launch. Endeavour's three engines now back at full throttle. Endeavour speed 1,400 miles per hour, 11 miles altitude, 8 miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. Endeavour's already burned more than two and a quarter million pounds of propellant, weighs less than half of what it did at liftoff. speed now 2,700 miles per hour, 25 miles altitude, 25 miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. Flight controller standing by for burnout and jettison of the twin solid rockets. Boost officer confirms good separation of the solid rockets. Endeavour on its second stage main engines now. Continue to operate well. Endeavour's two orbital maneuvering system engines now firing uh, as planned. A minute and 42 seconds that they'll fire with the three main engines to further thrust, uh, provide additional thrust for Endeavour during its climb to orbit. Speed now 3,400 miles per hour, 41 miles high. Endeavour, two engine tau. Two engine tau. And mass power will come on on our mark. Three, two, Endeavour Houston, two minutes to an early teacher's handover. Copy, Steve. 